a future where our insatiable thirst for artificial intelligence collides with the limits of our power grid. In a quiet corner of Washington State, Amazon, the empire built by Jeff Bezos, is quietly fueling up for that future. Out there, plans are underway for a new kind of power plant. Small, modular nuclear reactors that together could churn out up to 960 megawatt. These are not the massive atomic domes of old. They are sleek, advanced units, built in series, capable of powering hundreds of thousands of homes. It sounds like science fiction, but it's happening right now. Why is Amazon taking this step? Companies have unleashed machine learning models and cloud computing at a scale never seen before. Every time we chat with an AI, stream a movie or upload a photo, vast factories of servers hum away somewhere. These facilities, the data centers, need a staggering amount of energy to run 24-7. In fact, data centers in the US already consumed about 4% of all electricity in 2024, and experts say that figure could more than double by the end of the decade. Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, and others are locked in a race to expand AI and cloud services, and their computing centers are becoming energy monsters. Those energy demands bring risks. Recent studies warn that power consumption by AI-driven data centers could soar to as much as 10% of the nation's electricity by 2027, or even higher in some regions. In certain tech hubs, utilities are already bracing for data centers to consume 6 to 12% of all electricity. By the late 2020s, this means if you live in a city hosting multiple data center campuses, your home might be competing with AI servers for every kilowatt. Imagine neighborhoods hoping not to flick their lights on because a warehouse full of GPUs is sipping power around the clock. Big tech companies see this storm on the horizon, so they're taking matters into their own hands. Amazon's solution is nuclear. The company has announced deals to build four next-generation nuclear reactors in Washington State. These small modular reactors, SMRs, use cutting-edge fuel technology, tiny uranium fuel pebbles packed in layers of carbon, called trisofuel, and are cooled by helium gas. In simple terms, they work like this. The uranium atoms in the fuel pebbles split apart, releasing heat. That heat is carried by pressurized helium to water tanks, boiling the water into steam, which then drives turbines to create electricity. Unlike old-school reactors, these units are smaller, simpler, and can be built more quickly. Amazon's chief cloud executive calls them an advanced kind of reactor with a smaller footprint, built closer to the grid, and built faster than traditional plants. By assembling four of these units, Amazon's power plant could reach that 960 megawatt mark, enough juice for roughly 770,000 homes. On the surface, this sounds like a clean breakthrough, carbon-free nuclear power to fuel the next AI breakthrough. But the timing tells a larger story. Amazon isn't alone. Google is buying power from a new nuclear startup, Kairos Power. Microsoft is reviving an old reactor at Three Mile Island, and even Oracle and Meta are getting into nuclear deals. They all admit the same thing. Their AI and cloud businesses are so hungry, the electric grid, as it is, simply can't keep up unless we build a lot more power. In fact, Wall Street analysts at Goldman Sachs Project Data Center Energy Demand could grow 160% by 2030, driven by AI. A fifth of that growth alone by 2028. What does this mean for the rest of us? If deep-pocketed tech firms are going nuclear, does that leave ordinary people in the dark? The warning signs are already here. To keep their servers cool and humming, Utilities in some states have stalled the retirement of coal plants or started building new gas-fired generators. For example, in Virginia's booming tech corridor, the local power company admits it may need new natural gas plants despite pledges to go green. In Memphis, 
a new AI data center operated on diesel generators that polluted the air for miles, affecting public health because connecting to the clean grid was slower and more complicated. On the ground, customers are already footing a part of the bill. A wide-ranging analysis found that data centers and even cryptocurrency mining drove an extra $9.3 billion in grid costs in the Mid-Atlantic region over two years. That translates to roughly $18 more on the average monthly power bill for households in parts of Maryland and $16 more in Ohio. Looking ahead, one study warns that by 2030, America's average electricity bill could rise another 8%, and in hot spots like Northern Virginia, it might jump by over 25% due to these new industrial users. Right now, the typical U.S. home pays about $142 a month for electricity, up 25% from 10 years ago, and climbing. When data centers become giant, uninterruptible loads, every small town resident suddenly shares the pain of power shortages and higher rates. Even worse, if the grid can't expand fast enough, blackouts could become more common. Data centers draw power steadily day and night, unlike homes that ebb and flow with people's daily routines. That constant demand can create peak loads when the grid is already strained by heat waves or storms. Experts warn that without a major increase in clean generation, we risk rolling outages as utilities scramble to meet Al's appetite. We might see people waiting in the dark while server farms on the other side of town glow brightly. And yet, Tech companies seem willing to pay for luxury power supplies that most Americans can't afford. By locking in new nuclear reactors and big renewable plants, they ensure their lights stay green and bright. But what about the rest of us? Small businesses and ordinary neighborhoods might only see older, dirtier plants kept online and sky-high rates to cover grid upgrades. Some states have begun to debate whether data centers should be forced to build their own power or pay fees to protect local consumers. Without action, we could end up with a stark divide, world-class power for Al and very real energy poverty for everyone else. None of this is inevitable, but it's urgent. The race to power Al is revealing tough trade-offs. Nuclear energy offers massive zero-carbon output, but it comes with its own challenges, Radioactive waste, high costs, and long lead times. Even SMRS are years away from operating. In the meantime, rising demand might push more drilling, more pipelines, and more pollution if policymakers and planners don't keep pace. The lesson is clear. This isn't just a tech story. It's a warning shot about our collective energy future. As Al grows, data centers multiply. They are built near cities, near water, near transmission lines. They require constant cooling. They require uninterrupted power. Even a few seconds of outage can cost millions. So companies cannot rely on public infrastructure anymore. They are moving toward private energy, secured energy, controlled energy. As Jeff Bezos's Amazon pushes ahead with its mini nuke project in Washington, and as Al Labs everywhere chase more computing power, all eyes should be on how we balance these competing needs. One thing is certain, the age of cheap, endless electricity for all may be drawing to a close, and we're only beginning to see the consequences. Energy scarcity doesn't arrive all at once, it creeps in quietly. First, electricity bills rise, then utilities start warning about peak usage, then blackouts become normal during heat waves, then certain regions get priority, while others are left waiting. Eventually, energy becomes something you compete for. And let's be clear, this isn't about one company or one reactor. This is a global shift. Tech giants are positioning themselves for an energy-constrained future. They are investing early, securing resources, locking in supply, because they know something most people don't want to hear. 
the age of cheap, unlimited electricity is ending. Renewables alone are not scaling fast enough. Fossil fuels are politically and environmentally constrained. Nuclear, once abandoned, is being pulled back into the spotlight because it's one of the few sources capable of delivering massive, constant power without carbon emissions. II has forced this conversation back onto the table. But nuclear power doesn't arrive overnight. It takes years, planning, approvals, construction. Which means the gap between AI growth and energy availability will widen before it closes. That gap is where the crisis lives. During that gap, governments will struggle, utilities will ration, prices will surge, and the public will be told to conserve, to adapt, to accept higher costs as necessary for progress. Meanwhile, the companies driving that progress will keep running. This is the uncomfortable truth. Artificial intelligence is not just a technological revolution. It is an energy revolution. And revolutions always have winners and losers. The question is not whether an energy crisis is coming. The question is who will be prepared when it arrives. Jeff Bezos and companies like Amazon are already answering that question for themselves. They are building the future they need, not the future everyone needs. And unless the public understands what's happening now, the decisions will already be made by the time the lights start flickering. This is not a prediction meant to scare you. It's a warning meant to wake you up. Because once energy becomes scarce, everything changes. And by the time most people realize what's happening, the power will already be spoken for.